Okay, welcome to my video clip on the restoration of my uh, vintage analog computer. This is a Electronic Associates Incorporated TR20, referred to as an EAI TR20. The 20 referring to the fact that it has 20 operational amplifiers. The unit itself was made in New Jersey, which is kind of interesting because the the computer industry um, generally in the U.S. was considered to be centered in the, along the West Coast. So this broke with that tradition. The unit itself um, probably sold for around $10,000. They weren't cheap. This was a portable unit weighing uh, just over 100 pounds. It was the uh, the baby in the uh, in their family. They sold larger units, which uh, I think the largest unit featured um, 300 operational amplifiers. They were used in the area of education, uh, used by mathematicians, physicists, used in all sorts of uh, different areas, everything from suspension system design through the uh, early space industry, um, problem solving, uh, used by geophysicists. And in, uh, in general, um, not all that uncommon back in the uh, uh, late 60s. So what I'm going to do is just cover the uh, stage that I'm at now. And that's this unit. I've just actually restored it and have it back in operating condition now. Um, I stored it shortly after it was taken out of service in the early 70s. And and kept it nice and dry and basically it's in excellent condition. I have all of the original manuals and everything, the um, various length and color coded patch leads. I've stored these in tel talcum powder and uh, even the silver is as good as the day they were made. Also comes with a lot of spare parts. In restoring it, basically it just needed some of the electrolytics, uh, well, all of the electrolytics and power supply and some capacitors and other sections of the unit replaced. I chose to remove the old uh, internal um, base and stuff from the electrolytic cans that uses Mallory ones, uh, replacing them with suitable modern electrolytics that fit nicely inside the cans, then put the cans back in, and uh, pretty hard to tell that uh, they've been replaced. So what I will do in this video is just cover, as I say, some of the overall functions of what's on this front panel. Part of it is this panel here, which is a patch panel, which can be removed. And the concept was that the units themselves, an organization, would just have one or a limited number of these, but they would have a number of patch panels so the students or the engineers could go away, uh, patch up the uh, patch panel accordingly to the problem they were trying to solve, and then come back and plug it into the unit and get their results. So what we have in the front, we firstly have, uh, let me get back to manual here, so I'll use the correct terminology. Uh, these are referred to as coefficient attenuators, basically potentiometers in the switch. And they're patched through to this yellow area in the patch panel, which uh, was referred to as the coefficient attenuator patching area, rather appropriate. The area below that, gives you access to all of the various uh, integrator network and nonlinear components that this thing could be set up to have. Some of these uh, units were optional. These brown units, for example, are actually located down in this expansion area down here. I'm not going to go into any detail of what, what's actually in this unit at this stage. Just, just a quick overview. Um, things like the reference supply that's uh, used are uh, patched through in a number of areas along here. Then below it are the operational amplifiers and there's actually 10 dual units giving you your total of 20 operational amplifiers. So behind here are actually 20, uh, 10 modules which can be removed to be serviced and whatnot. Each uh, of these 20 amplifiers uses uh, what's called DC stabilized um, DC, chopper stabilized type uh, technology that was common back then and basically what happened was you took the positive and negative inputs the op amps reversed them 
um, and then filtered the output. So the, the concept was that with discrete components, you drift was always a problem, so this would cancel the drift out. Uh, then we have the, the, the control panel area. First thing we have is the uh, overload indicators. These are indicator um, incandescent lights which indicate a, a fault condition. Then we have a selector switch which allows us to look at uh, the 20 amplifier outputs plus uh, two additional ones, channel 21 and channel uh, 22, which are in fact the plus and minus reference voltages. So at the moment it's set on 21 and now we have plus 10 and 22 which is minus 10 reference voltage. Uh, in this group here we have the on-off switch, very self-explanatory. Then we have the null pot, um, the null pot and the reference selector switch below, so the off plus minus reference. We have a mode switch which has a reset position to hold and operate. Then we have a group of switches which is associated with the voltmeter, the panel meter. And we can look at the output of the op amps, which we are now, so we're looking at wherever the selector switch is set to. We also have a balance position, so for any of the 22 or 20 amp amps up here, we can actually adjust the, um, the um, balance of those op amps to zero. Uh, a few other controls, a voltmeter um, switch, so at the moment it's on 10 volts, full scale, 30 volts full scale, so showing 10 volts. We have uh, computational time switches. Um, we um, also have access to some stepped uh, repetitive functions. Uh, we'll, we'll see these in operation uh, in another clip when we do some uh, examples using them. Then we have um, attenuator switches, a group of those which are can be patched through from this group here. I think that basically gives an overview of the unit. Um, must admit they were extremely well built. Um, this unit, even after being stored for this many years, the uh, accuracy of uh, things like the reference voltages that are, are quite phenomenal. Um, lovely product. So stay tuned for more.